Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Charles Lawton and Maureen O'Sullivan in This Land is Mine with Edgar Barrier. Tonight, the Lux Radio Theater comes to you from Hollywood as usual, but your producer speaks to you from Little Rock, Arkansas. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Arkansas, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, I'm not far from the geographical center of the United States. In fact, right in the middle of the Lux Radio Theater audience. I've come here to join the people of Arkansas and Little Rock in paying tribute to one of their own. The story of Dr. Wassell with Gary Cooper as the screen hero is having a formal opening here in Little Rock because Dr. Wassell was, was an Arkansas country doctor before romance and adventure called him halfway around the world. The Arkansas countryside is the scene of some of the picture, and perhaps it's the origin of the high courage that carried a good plain American to world fame. This is the kind of an occasion that reaffirms one's faith in America. This war belongs to the ordinary people of the world, and there are those in the darkened countries of Europe who carry on the fight, too. Tonight's drama is about these soldiers without uniform, the army of the underground, which waits for the greatest day of our time, the day of liberation. Our play is the RKO hit, This Land is Mine. And we have the same distinguished artist you saw in the picture, Charles Lawton. And co-starring with Charles tonight is lovely Maureen O'Sullivan. I've looked forward to every new Lawton play or picture since I first saw Charles act 13 years ago. That was on a stage in London. And it was evident that night that a brilliant new star had found a place in the theater. Later, he came to America and gave a fine performance for me as Nero in The Sign of the Cross. Crossing the nation this week, I found a great interest in the inner workings of the Lux Radio Theater, a curiosity about the way the wheels of radio drama go round. But one thing you all seem to understand is the fact that Lux makes the whole enterprise possible. There were questions about your favorite stars and requests for certain plays and pictures. <laughs> some of you, some of you even picked actual seats in this theater and visualized the play from an imaginary eighth row center. Each time I make one of these trips, I feel a little closer to the people who gather with us on Monday night. And because Lux Flakes has stood for top performance in its field for so many years, I get quite a, quite a kick out of being greeted wherever I go as that Lux man. And now, across the country, we raise the curtain on the first act of This Land is Mine, starring Charles Lawton as Albert Lorry and Maureen O'Sullivan as Louise Martin, with Edgar Barrier as Major Von Keller. In the gazetteer of war, the town in our play is without significance. Stalingrad or Liditsa are names for the history books, Rotterdam and Coventry. It is enough to say our scene is somewhere in Europe. Nor will future generations identify the people of our play. Their names, too, in a world crammed with heroes and madmen, are only drops of water in a rushing river. We're concerned tonight only with what people did, with their capacities for glory and for shame. So easily, they might have been ourselves. From the diary of Albert Laurie, I've been a failure. My 40 years have been full of fears and confusion. People, the world, and the minds of men have left me spent and ignorant. I'm a schoolteacher by profession. In this little town, I have found my refuge. Yes, refuge. Though the boys I teach tend to hoot and laugh at me, so apparent is my weakness of will. If I've never been completely happy, it is equally true I've never been completely unhappy. Resolute and enduring are my books. God has spared my mother. And there is Louise. Louise Martin. She's also a teacher. As long as she's here, nothing else matters. From the diary of Albert Laurie, 
April 5th, 1941. Two weeks ago, the Germans seized our town. They came without violence. It has become evident the Nazis wish to be friendly. Now, this morning, for instance, a German soldier knocked at our door. He left a procl proclamation freshly printed. Well, well, what does it say? Read it, Albert. All public offices will function as heretofore without German interference, including law enforcement and the school system. Mother, they let us alone. Did you hear that? The school system? Yes, what else, uh, Albert? However, any incident directed against the forces of occupation will come under the direct jurisdiction of the Commandant, Major von Keller. Please cooperate and help keep our civilian life free. Signed, Henry Manville. Well. All right. Finish your breakfast, Albert. You'll be late for school. Yes, Mother. I have a surprise for you, darling. Look. Milk? How did you get it? The doctor gave me a prescription. Oh, are you sick? Oh, have I ever been well ever since you were born? Here, Mother, you drink. No, no. You know I can't stand milk. But there's no reason why you shouldn't... Probably just Louise's cat from next door. She should keep her filthy cat at home all night long. At <gasps> mother. Under the door. Look. It's just a paper, Mother. I'll get it. Why don't they knock? Why don't they sneak things under the door? But it's nothing. It's only a... Liberty. Oh. Oh. It says liberty. Citizens. Unless the conquerors are driven out of our land, it means generations of slavery. We must resist. Let each of us say to himself, this land is mine. Trouble, Baker. This is dangerous, Mother. I, I'd better burn it. In the kitchen, quick, quick. And hold on, Shade. And someone may say, quick. We have a visitor, Mother. No, no. It's just Louise's cat in our window, Sue. Chase him off. Chase him. As soon as I burn the paper, Mother. Just hurry, Albert. You'll be late. <laughs> Morning. Morning, Paul. That our cat you've got there? Oh, sir, you have to run away. Hmm. I've been looking all over for that cat. Here, Louise. She's probably been annoying your mother again. Now, go on. Shoot, shoot. You're shoot. very fond of your cat, Louise. <laughs> Paul, aren't you late for work? Oh, just got through fixing my bicycle. Flat tire. I guess it'll hold till I get to the railroad yard. We'll be late, too, Albert. Fine example to set for our pupils. <laughs> Wait a second. Look, Albert. Come for dinner tonight. Yes, do. It'll be just us and George Lambert. George is bringing the dinner. Pigeons. My boss is so crazy about Louise, he even chases pigeons for her. Oh. Pigeons? Sure. George has some traps on the roof of the freight office. Will you come, Albert? Oh, thank you. But my mother, you see, she doesn't like to be left alone. You know, she's not very oh. well. Oh, I'm sorry. Look, Albert, have you seen this? Oh, Paul, don't be crazy. Liberty. Uh, yes, I burned our copy. Watch out. Hide it. Quickly. Hmm? Why? Can't you see? Just turning the corner. Two soldiers. Oh, I can't hide this. Hey, Aunt. Yeah? Want to read something? What is it? Something that should interest you. Here, let me see, Paul. Here. Where did you get this? Under our front door. Uh, we find many like this already, Paul. If you find any more, please tell us. Sure. You? Yes, yeah, yes, sir. Any your house? My house? Oh, no, no. Come along, Carl. Thank you, Paul. Keep in touch with her. Sure. Paul, do you know these soldiers? Well, what if I do? They're just doing their job. And are you doing yours? Look, why just pick on me? You don't say anything to George. Well, goodbye, you two. Come on, Albert, walk fast now. Yes, Louise. So I thought it best that I come here to school myself, Professor Sorrell, and tell you about it. And these books of mine must be burned, Mr. Mayor? Yes. I think it very wise if I take them. Juvenile. Tacitus. Voltaire. Plato's Republic. Oh, I'm so sorry. We were told that Professor Sorrell won. Come in, Laurie. Come in. Miss Martin? Good morning. I, I'm just leaving. Goodbye, Professor. Goodbye, Mr. Manville. Is anything wrong? It is beginning, Laurie. Our books must undergo alterations. History, geography, and literature. Pending the arrival of new books, you will go to your classrooms and have the children tear out certain pages from our present books. Oh, why do they make us do this? Why don't they bring in German teachers and get it all over oh, with? Don't be upset, Louise. After all, school will continue. We'll... Now, if you have pencils, please note the deletions. In your history books, chapter one, destroy pages seven and eight. Seven and eight? Pages 15 and 16, mm -hmm. 21 and 22, chapter two. 
I was back in my classroom making the deletions when the air raid alarm suddenly shrieked and the fearful drone of approaching bombers filled our ears. The planes were British, and with each explosion, I should have uttered a prayer of thanks. But instead, I became hysterical. Before a hundred students, before Professor Sorrell and Louise, I shook and I wept and I moaned. Well, the boys laughed and mocked me, but I just couldn't help it. I can't stand violence and noise. I'm a coward and I'm a weakling. And now they all know it. Even she. Well, after the raid, Professor Sorrell sent for me. Close the door, Laurie. I know what you're going to say, sir. So I'm ridiculous. I'm stupid, but I... These raids are new to us, Laurie. After a while, we'll get accustomed to them. I'll never change. Would you like to transfer to a safer district? Oh, no, no, sir. Because of Miss Martin? Yes, sir. I see. Does she know how you feel? No. Oh, goodness, I thought you were a confirmed bachelor. Sit down, Laurie. You know, in a time like this, I believe we're the most important people in the country. Yes, sir. This morning we were told to mutilate our books. But we contain those books. And they can't destroy the truth without destroying us. Oh, we may seem weak to the children now. We have no weapons. We don't march. But it's part of our fight to teach the children to admire us. So we can really lead them. Maybe we'll win, Laurie. Or maybe we'll be shot. Professor. Oh, I... no, my friend, I don't ask you to die. But if you think these Professor things over... Sorrell. Professor Sorrell. In here, Victor. What is it? There's been a wreck at the railroad yard. Supply chain. So... It begins already. They'll take hostages now, even if it was an accident. Hostages? You hear, Laurie? Now we've got to be strong. When the wreck occurred, Paul Martin, at Louise's brother, was on duty in the switch tower, and Major von Keller questioned him there. The toll cable is broken, sir. I see. You know nothing about it, of course. Oh, no, sir. It seemed all right when I pulled it just before the wreck. The cable was cut, Martin. Yes, sir. But as far as you and I know, it was an accident. An accident? Yes. You understand? Yes, sir. Well, later in the afternoon, Louise hurried to the railroad yard. She went to George Lambert's office. It was only natural she should go to George. They were engaged to be married. Oh, what a mess, darling. I'm afraid I'm in for some trouble. After all, I'm the superintendent. Thank goodness no one was killed. But I can't understand how it happened. The chances are Von Keller will hold me accountable. Oh, George, I'm sorry. That's unselfish, but I was thinking about myself. Something happened at home this afternoon that I can't understand. What, Louise? Well, I went to the market. I was gone nearly two hours. And when I got home, the house had been searched. Oh, excuse me, Lambert. Oh, oh, please come in, sir. Uh, Major Von Keller, Miss Martin. I wanted to talk with you alone, George. Well, I'll see you later. Oh, please, Miss Martin. Uh, Lambert, she wants to ask you about some pages she lost. Not lost, Major. Stolen. Pages? What pages? We had suggested some slight changes in the text of our school books, Lambert. Miss Martin made the deletions, but she unwisely took the pages home and we confiscated them. You see, we protect the people we like from their own indiscretion. I found out what I wanted to ask you, George. Oh, goodbye. I'll see you tonight. Oh, forget it, Lambert. We have more important things to discuss. I have decided that the wreck was an accident. Well, I wouldn't call it an accident, Major. Neither would I. It was obviously sabotage. I knew as soon as they began circulating that illegal newspaper, Liberty, that we'd have trouble. Find the men who print it and you'll find your saboteurs. I prefer not to use the word saboteur. What? If we call it sabotage, I shall have to take hostages. And I shall have to shoot the hostages later. The guilty are not found. Once you begin with that, you're sitting on a keg of dynamite. Then what do we do about it? We keep our ears open. You are in touch with all the men who work here. You think they'll tell me anything? They regard me as an enemy. For a while yet, they will continue to regard me too as an enemy. Well, if I thought you were, I wouldn't be doing what I am. Well, I am here to help men like you to rebuild your own country. Remember what Germany was like before the Fuhrer? But the people were not bad. They were only waiting to be told the truth. And German blood will flow until that truth is given to all the world. Believe me, Major, I want the new order for my country, but I, I must be honest. We don't like the occupation. But neither do I. Well, I'm glad we understand each other. We will both work to end this war. And then will your country and men like you regain your honor. Yes, it's the only way. It's the only way. 
today, ten days after the wrecking of the supply train, there was a sudden raid by the German intelligence. Four men printing copies of the illegal newspaper were seized. A crowd quickly gathered on the street, and soon von Keller's car arrived. With him was our mayor. They watched the Nazis take their prisoners, and then, as they started to drive away, someone threw a bomb. Two Nazi soldiers were killed. The guards caught a fleeting glimpse of a man on the rooftops across the street. They shot, but the man escaped. Paul? Paul, is that you? Yes. Oh, Paul has been in trouble. Did you hear the shooting? Yes, I heard it. Oh, someone threw a bomb and... Paul. Oh. It's nothing, Louise. It barely scratched my arm. You. It was you. Yes. Oh, Paul. Paul, why didn't you tell me? I was going to tell you sometime soon, Louise. Oh, this fence. Do you mind? Oh, Paul. Paul and I thought, thought that you... thought I was were... with them. Oh. No, it was simply more convenient for people to think so, Louise. I've fought them since the day they came here. That wreck at the railroad yard? That was you, too? That was easy. Oh, Paul, if they shot you, that means they saw you. They recognized they you. They weren't close enough. Only one person saw me. Next door, Mrs. Laurie. I cut across their yard... I was holding my arm, but I don't think she made any special notice of it. Oh, Paul, I'm so proud of you. I can believe in you again. Paul, my brother. All right, now. Just take it easy and get this bandage on. He got away? Wasn't even recognized? That's right, Mayor. Well, have you any suggestions? Remember, the attempt was made upon your life as well as mine. What about the princess you arrested? I'm afraid you don't understand your own people. Well, we had them in Germany, too. They will die, but they will tell nothing. Well, we shall have to take hostages. I hate to begin it, but two German soldiers have been killed. Hostages? For the train wreck, my superiors accepted apologies. This time, they want hostages. Well, here is a copy of the paper we found on the printing press. You should study it. It has a classical flavor. Listen. They make a desert, and they call it peace. Now, who wrote that? That writing shows scholarship. Wait a minute, those books. Books? What books? The books you found on Professor Sorel's desk. Yes. Here we are. Plato, Voltaire, Juvenal, Tacitus, Tacitus. Ubi solitudinum fortune parkem appella. You recognize it? Uh, Greek? It's Latin. Tacitus is referring to the Roman occupation. They make a desert and they call it peace. There, we've got it. You've got what? Surely you don't suspect Sorel. He'd never make an attempt on my life. Of course not, my dear mayor. Of course not. No, stop it. Get off, please. Let me alone. Boys, boys, what are you doing? Answer me. Very well, get back to your desk. I'm very disappointed in you. This is a place of culture, and the first requisite of culture is good manners. Edmund Sorrell? Yes, sir. What's that on your face? Isn't that a letter, Jay? They say I'm a Jew. Who did it? I... I don't know, sir. Go to the washroom, Edmund, and clean your face. Mr. Laurie, please come quickly. Miss Martin, what is it? Professor Sorrell, they're arresting him. I heard you. My father. But they can't take him. They can't. Father, father, father. Professor Sorrell. Professor Sorrell. Get back. Stand aside. It's all right, Laurie. It's all right. Don't leave us, Professor. We can't run the school without you. Dignity, Laurie. You'll have to run the school now. Get away from that door. Let go. You can't take him. I won't let you. Oh, I warned you. Ow! Father! It's all right, son. Don't worry. I'll come back. Goodbye. Take them away. Edmund. My father. You're a brave boy, Edmund. Albert? They took him away and I did nothing. Oh, you did all you could do, Albert. And you weren't afraid. They took him away and I did nothing. In just a moment, Charles Lawton and Marino Sullivan return in Act Two of This Land is Mine. Now that so many husbands and fathers are being called into the service, many families are doubling up. In the Howard family, for instance, the married daughter, Jean, 
has come home and is unpacking in her old room. Here, let me help thee. You go ahead with the trunk and I'll unpack your suitcase. Let's see now. Where do you want your slip, dear? Uh, second drawer, I think, Mother, in the middle. Why, gee, what in the world happened to these? There's hardly any color left in them. I know, and I haven't had them very long either. Goodness, even the sacks are frayed. I'll see if I can put some new ones on for you. Oh, thanks, Mum, but don't <coughs> bother. I'll have to get some new slips. Gracious, child. These days, you ought to take better care of your things. By the way, I put some Lux flakes in the bathroom so you can do your undies upstairs. Oh, I'm not fussy. Anything will do. Oh, you mean you haven't been using Lux? Well, no. So, that's it. Strong soaps aren't fit for these nice things, Jeannie. If my grocer gets out of Lux Place, I just keep asking until he gets some more in. I wouldn't take chances with anything else. Actual washing tests prove Mother is right. Slips and nightgowns, which were given Lux care, were color fresh, lovely, after 30 Luxing. But harsh wash day methods left the same kind of slips badly faded. Straps were frayed. Seams pulled out, too. Now, when it's so important to make things last, don't risk rough handling, too hot water, strong soap. As we say it with music, undies lead a long life when they lead a luxe life. Now, here's Act Two of This Land is Mine, starring Charles Lawton as Albert Laurie and Maureen O'Sullivan as Louise with Edgar Barrier as Major Van Keller. From the diary of Albert Lorry, Professor Sorrell was not the only hostage. They took seven other men and two women. I returned to the school, I couldn't think. I simply dismissed all classes and went home. Well, Louise tried to pleading with Von Keller, but that was no use. And then she went to the railroad yards to George Lamb. Von Keller says they'll all be shot, George. Shot? Unless the guilty man gives himself up. George, maybe if you saw Von Keller, he liked you. He said that? He said he'd be worried about me if it weren't that I were going to be married to a very reliable man. I see. Oh, George, I'm so frightened. I don't know what to do. Look, darling, nothing will happen for at least a week, and by then they'll find the man who threw the bomb and all the hostages will be released. But you don't understand. You see, the man who... Oh, George, I'm in such an awful spot. Well, whoever it was, if he has a spark of courage or decency in him, he'll give himself up and save these innocent people. You think he's a criminal? Louise, we must face facts. If one of us wants to resist openly and get killed, that's foolish, but, well, it's courageous. But the man who secretly resists with acts of sabotage is a coward. He escapes and the innocent die. You mean anyone who resists them should give himself up? That's exactly what I mean. What well, about surrender? And we'd have peace. What becomes of a nation if its citizens all die? Professor Sorrell isn't afraid to die. But he's old. We are young. I know young men who aren't afraid to die. Nothing is worth the sacrifice of your life, Louise. We have everything before us. Love, marriage, children. No, no, no. Please, George. Louise. Oh, George. I was in love with you once. Perhaps I'm still in love with you. But as you were talking just now, I felt as though I'd never looked at you before. Darling, you're upset. Oh, you don't have... I know I'm upset. But this is the first time you've been completely frank with me. Everything that's happened, I'm so confused. I haven't found the answer yet to the things you've said, but I feel... I know you're wrong. Oh, George, don't be angry, but I, I've got to leave now. I've got to leave. <laughs> Two days later, Louise invited me to have dinner with her and Paul. We waited for Paul to come home, but he was very late. I don't understand what's keeping him. Louise, I have something to tell you. You're worried, aren't you? Is it your mother? Oh, I know she doesn't like me. She didn't want you to come here, did she? Well, oh, I, I understand, Al, that she's old and she's lonely. Look, you don't have to stay. You can go home. Thank you, Louise. Louise, I must speak to you. Yes. I know I'm not young, and you're so very young in my mind. You know, I remember the day you graduated, and I was already teaching then. And I remember the day you first came back to teach a class, and I was so worried about you, and so happy when I saw how the children loved you. Oh. And now, now we're the only ones left in the school, and I feel so very close to you. 
What's that? It must be an air raid. Oh, but there aren't any planes. It sounded as if it came from the railroad yard. Paul! Paul, what Quiet. is it? Listen very closely. Sit down at the table, Arthur. We've all been here having dinner. Understand? I've been here for an hour. But I don't understand what They'll you... all be searching here any minute. You've got to help me, Arthur. If they ask questions, you and Louise and I have been having dinner since I came home an hour ago. Oh, put a little of this on your plate, as though you'd eaten the rest. Good. I was going to go home. Here, have a cigarette. But I, 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 I don't smoke. It's easy. Just breathe in. <coughs> Come in. Okay, we have to search the place. That's you, Hans? What's wrong? What were those explosions? Ammunition train blown up. Anyone come in here? Oh, not a soul. And you? You live here? No. What are you doing here, then? Oh, he's just Mr. Larry from next door. He was having dinner with us. I, I don't smoke. He's the schoolmaster. I just gave him his first cigarette. Answer me, schoolmaster. How long have you been here? Six o'clock. Who else was here? Why, Louise was here. I mean, Miss Martin. And my brother, Paul. I'm asking him. Who was here? He was... Here. You're sure about that? Yes, sir. And you, Paul? You're sure he was here all this time? I'm sure. He's sweet on my sister. Albert! Albert! That's my mother. I live next door. Please, I must go to Why not? But we'll go together. Go along, schoolmaster. Get out of my house. Where do you think you are? In Germany? I told you we have to search all these houses. What's in this cabinet? Get your dirty hands off. Oh, oh my best china. You lover. You beast. Look what you did. Albert! I'm sorry, lady. Mother. What's the matter here? Albert, my best china. Look, he's mad. No, mother, mother. Please. The brute, the dirty brute. Cobber. Yes, sir. Are you satisfied, madame? Do you wish me to strike him again? No, you're a brute, too. Get out. Both of you, get out. Albert. Albert. After the blowing up of the ammunition train, they took more hostages. At breakfast time, they came for me. My poor mother fought them like a tigress. They pushed her, they knocked her down, but they couldn't stop her. Word came to me even in prison of how during the next three days she stormed outside the mayor's office demanding that he see her, but it was useless. The mayor said he was too busy. I can't help it if the mayor wouldn't see you. This is the railroad office. Tell Mr. Lambert it's Mrs. Lorry. I demand to see Mr. Lambert. Once and for all, Mr. Lambert is very busy. He cannot see you. Is he in there? Yes, he's in there. Then watch. Really, Mrs. Lorry. George Lambert, you listen to me. You're keen, madame. Thank you. You know what they've done to my poor Albert. I'm very sorry. Sorry, you're going to do something about it. Oh, come in, Mrs. Lorry. Sit down. You sit down and listen to me. If the guilty man is found, all hostages are released. Is that so? Of course. Then pay attention. The day that bomb was thrown, I was at my window. I saw a man climb over the fence and come across my yard. I recognized the man. He was holding his arm. That man... That's the story as Mrs. Laurie told it to me only half an hour ago. Well, you've done your duty. You can expect to be well rewarded if Paul Martin is the man. I don't want a reward, Mayor. Believe me, this was very difficult for me to do. You're saving lives. Laurie's life. Sorrell's, all of them. Sorrell's a radical. They won't release him and you know it. The thing that makes me boil is how Paul fooled me all the time. Making friends with a German. One thing I cannot stand, hypocrisy. They call me a hypocrite. But I'm not. I collaborate, yes. And you know why. I'm mayor of this town. My duty to defend it. Where can they find this fellow, Martin? Hmm? What? Oh, um, he's on the night shift tonight. He should be at the switch tower at 9 o'clock. Hello? Operator? I want to speak to Major Von Keller. At the time, of course, I was unaware of George Lambert's visit with Mayor Manville, so I was quite startled when the next morning the guards opened my cell and told me to go home as I stood knocking at our front door. I felt important and powerful. For one foolish moment, I convinced myself that I was too valuable for the Nazis to keep in jail. 
Oh, my boy. My boy. Morning, Mother. Oh, my poor boy. Just look at What's you. What's the matter? I'm just fine. I hadn't slept for three nights thinking of you in that horrible prison. Oh, very nice, Mother. Professor Sorel was there, and we talked all the time. When the German soldiers tried to listen, we talked in Latin. Just like a man. Talk, 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 and let the women worry. Oh, Mother, I'm worried, too, about Professor Sorel. They didn't release him. I was the only one they let go. Why did they let me go, Mother? Oh, they aren't fools. They know you're needed at the school. Professor Sorel is needed at the school more than I am. Now, now, don't ask questions. They let him out. Hurry now, my darling. Wash up. Oh, first I must go and tell Louise. Paul and Louise. No, 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 no. Mother, I must tell her that I'm free. It'll make her very happy. No, 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 Albert, no. No, don't leave me. Mother. I don't feel well, and... You can't go out on the street looking the way you do. Now, Mother, I've just come through the street, and Paul and Louise live right next door. I'll be back in a minute. No, Albert, Albert! Oh. Morning, Louise. You see, I'm free. They had to let me go. Yes, I see. Well, where's Paul? You coward. Hmm? You traitor. Louise. You ask me where Paul is? Paul is dead. They shot him. That's why you're free. Paul is dead? Oh, we knew you were weak, but I told Paul you'd never tell. I told him we could trust you. How much do they pay you, or do they only give you your life back? Louise! Oh, don't try to lie. You're the only one who knew. Now get out! Albert, uh, aren't you going to eat? Paul's dead. She thinks I'm formed on him. She despises me. She's mixed up in it, too, just like that brother was. He was to blame for putting you in prison. Paul is dead. And you're free, thank I've God. I've got to go back to her. I've got it. No, 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 Albert. You might as well know now. I'm the one who told. Told? Told what? Well, I saw him sneak home the day that bomb was thrown. And I saw him climb in the window the night you left me alone for that girl. Did you, my own mother, tell that to the German? I told George Lambert. George Lambert? Yes, yes, George is your friend, Albert. George Lambert? Albert, Albert, where are you Let going? Go. Let go of me, let go. Oh, Good morning, Lambert. Now, what's the matter with you? You look as though you have indigestion, or didn't you sleep well last night? Look out of the window. There, by the shed. That's where he fell. They, they shot him there. Now, sit down, my friend, and don't worry. His sister will never know. We keep our secrets. She broke our engagement days ago. Now, she'll be lonely. She'll make up with you. Have you released all the hostages? And by no means. But you promised them. <laughs> Only that fool schoolmaster, Laurie, one for one. A fair trade, good business. Well, Martin's funeral is tomorrow, Lambert. Yes, I know. Many people will be afraid to attend, but you will go. She will admire you for risking my displeasure. And when you take her home, she'll want to talk. She knows who the accomplices were, and you know the way to my office. Do you think I'd do that? I'm sure you will, Lambert. You're too intelligent not to. Good morning, my friend. Good day, Major Von Keller. Oh, Mr. Lambert. Yes? Oh, here, sir. Another fine pigeon, sir. We caught it in the trap in the loft. Uh, perhaps you'd like to have it for your dinner, sir? Give it to me. Yes. You, you can go now. Go to lunch and close the door. Yes, sir. A pigeon for my dinner. No, no. Somewhere out there is freedom for you, little bird. How, how soft you are. Like her hair. A note. I should leave a note. There's so much I'd like to say to her. No, it's, it's no use. No use. Mr. Lambert? Mr. Lambert? What have you done? Mr. Lambert? A gun? Mr. Lambert? I heard a shot. Mr. Lambert? You! You shot him! No, no, no. I just came. I came to see him. As I opened the door, there was a shot, and I found him with his gun. Murder! You killed him! Murder! Murder! We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.
After a brief intermission, we'll hear Charles Lawton and Maureen O'Sullivan in Act Three of This Land is Mine. Now, here's Bill, home on furlough. Got to pinch myself, honey. Am I really having dinner with you tonight instead of 500 other guys? <laughs> well, we go to celebrate. Well, gosh, honey, I'd just like to stay home. That cooking of yours is tops. Anything you say, soldier. I'll tell you what, we'll do it with all the trimming. Silver candlesticks, our best china, and we won't worry now how many dishes we'll have to wash. Say, maybe we better go out after all. Can't let you get dishpan hands while I'm home. I like that. Anything wrong with my hands right now? Not a thing, baby. But I guess you haven't been washing many dishes lately. Every single night. Well, I don't get it. You used to talk a lot about how rough it made your hands. Oh, but it's all different now. Something new? Well, you know how I park in the bathroom luxing stockings and undies every night. Now I'm using Lux for dishes, too. That's new for me. So what does it do? So I don't get horrid dishpan hands anymore. No kidding. Uh Uh-huh. They got all soft and smooth again in no time. And that's all I did. Change to Lux. Smart girl, my wife. Yes, it's true. Smart wives are changing from strong soaps to Lux flakes for dishes. See for yourself how easy it is to change dishpan hands to Lux hands. Lux is thrifty, too. It goes further, actually does up to twice as many dishes as any of ten other leading soaps tested. Change to Lux Flakes for your dishes. Now the curtain rises on the third act of This Land is Mine, starring Charles Lawton and Maureen O'Sullivan, with Edgar Barrier. From the diary of Albert Laurie. I'd been found in the office with a gun in my hand and on the floor, dead, was George Lambert. I was charged with murder. The court was jammed. Louise was there, dressed in black in memory of Paul, her dead brother, for whose death she understandably held me responsible. Now I was being tried for killing the man to whom she was once engaged. Prosecution will continue, please. Gentlemen of the jury, the murder of George Lambert by Albert Laurie has been proved by the witnesses who found him in the office, by the gun he held, and by one of the oldest motives in criminal history, jealousy. You may find it preposterous to believe that a man of Albert Laurie's age of such a weak and timid character could become so enamored of a young woman as to commit murder to dispose of a rival. But Laurie was in love with Louise Martin, the fiancée of the man he murdered. Prosecution rests, Your Honor. Mr. Laurie? Yes, Your Honor. This court deeply regrets your continued refusal to be defended by counsel. You may speak now, but be clear and to the point. Thank you, Your Honor. All I wish to say, I've written down the papers here in my pocket. I'm sorry. Sure, I had the paper. That's all I've been doing in my cell, writing it all down. Well, take it out and read it. It seems that's impossible, Your Honor. My pocket. There's a hole in it. The paper must have dropped out. <laughs> I'll, I'll do my best, however, if you'll excuse me for speaking badly. I've never been able to speak in public. My only defense is the truth. Well, the truth is that I wanted to kill George Lambert. But I don't think I could have. You see, I'm too weak. I'm a coward. Everybody knows that, even the prosecutor. Oh, I'm not a coward inside my heart. I have brave dreams. I'm not afraid inside of me to commit murder. But when I face realities, I'm lost. I'm a coward. You you know, it's strange, but we're two people, all of us, inside and outside... George Lambert was two men. He, too, couldn't face reality. But he was different from me. Lambert was strong outside and weak inside. Inside, he was a coward. And when this honest coward had to face what the other George, the brave George, had done, he couldn't stand it. So he killed himself. In a way, of course, I am responsible for his death through my mother's love for me. Uh, The prosecutor saw fit to mention the name of Miss Martin. I'm sorry about that, but as long as he has singled you out, Louise, perhaps you'll not think too harshly of me if I speak directly to you. Louise, you thought I informed on Paul. It was my mother. To save me, 
She told George Lambert. Lambert went to the mayor. And he, in turn, went to Major Von Keller, and Paul was killed. I object. The accused has no right to seize on this occasion to slander Mayor man. Your Honor, if I'm stopped now, how can anyone here believe that our civil courts are dealing out justice, as the official newspaper insists? Laurie, I'm sorry, but... Proceed, Laurie. Yeah, George Lambert and Mayor Manville were quite alike. They took the side of the powerful men. They found they got on better that way. They learned even to admire them. Your Honor, it's intolerable that the accused should exploit this courtroom to voice dangerous political opinions. Maybe these things are political, sir, but they're the basis of my defense. This is the court of justice, Your Honor. Can the prisoner be permitted to slander the name of his victim? Is this a free court, Your Honor? If the accused insists upon this kind of defense, I request the permission to call in a new witness. What new witness? Mayor Henry Manville. Has the accused any objection? No, not at all, sir. Very well. This session stands adjourned until 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Oh. Huh. The guards found the speech which I had written and lost. It was brought to my cell that evening by a very important man, Major von Keller. Well, Lorry, from all accounts, you did very well in court today without this speech. Uh, thank you, sir, but I've decided not to use it. Lorry, I was mistaken about you. You're a man of real courage. I was a fool not to realize it sooner. Oh, no. No, I'm not. Cigarette? Hmm? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's my second one. And the like. Thank you. <coughs> you made a great mistake in court today, Laurie. You called yourself a coward, but you quickly disproved it by what you later said. Now they know you killed Lambert. But I didn't. <laughs> and I believe you. It all makes so much sense. I remember now how strangely Lambert looked when I left him that morning. And the clerk was just coming in with a pigeon. Well, the plan of action becomes suddenly most clear. Lambert was despondent because of losing Miss Martin. The police will shortly discover a suicide note. And we can handle the jury and you'll be acquitted. Oh. Yes. There will be no need for you to say another word in court. Did they find a suicide note? <laughs> you are a poet, Laurie, a poet. I don't understand why you're trying to save my life. I like you. Uh, and you don't want me to say anything more in court. It's a peculiar situation, Laurie. We Germans could readily take over the courts, but we prefer to collaborate, to give freedom to the nations we have defeated. But freedom must be limited by the necessities of war. We ask you to speak no more. A very small sacrifice, you will agree, when we are still sacrificing our lives for the future happiness of the world. You mean I was right in what I said about Lambert and the mayor? You're right, of course you are right. The honest Lamberts, the dishonest Manvilles, we find them in every country we invade. They are waiting for us in England. They will be waiting for us also in America. You believe that, Major? It is a certainty. What is England but a lot of old ladies wearing their grandfather's leather breeches? <laughs> and America? Very spectacular, very childish. <laughs> a charming cocktail of the Irish and the Jews. <laughs> I see. Uh, 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 could I have another light for my cigarette? Uh, uh, certainly. Laurie, I'm glad you've decided to live and to be a free man. You have a great duty, the regeneration of youth. Make them ready for the world of tomorrow, Laurie. Believe me, it will be a fine world. All night, I sat in my cell and pondered over what Von Keller had said. At dawn... I was sitting with my head in my hands when I heard marching footsteps in the prison yard. I looked out through the iron bars. The soldiers were leading eight men and two women against a wall. Among them was Professor Sorrell. I screamed to him. I shouted his name. At last, he glanced up at me and he smiled. He waved his hand to me. I saw his lips move, but what he said, I don't know. Aim! Professor Sorrell! All right, Mr. Prosecutor, you may call your new witness. If it pleases the court, it will not be necessary. New evidence has been found. Oh. What new evidence? Just found, Your Honor. 
This note in the handwriting of the late George Lambert, it saves us from a serious miscarriage of justice because it clearly indicates that Lambert intended to commit suicide. Oh. Let me have that note. Certainly, Your Honor. Excuse me, sir. That note's a forgery. I know all about it. Major von Keller told me last night. Quiet, you fool. Do you realize what you're saying, Laurie? It's out of his mind, Your Honor. The man's insane. No, I'm not insane, Your Honor. The prosecutor wrote that note himself. I think he's trying to save my life. Go on. I learned last night that I'm a very lucky man. That this is the only place left in my country where a man can still speak out. Your Honor, I request that the court will be clear. The prosecutor's afraid. He wants to deprive me of my last chance to be heard. I know I'm a condemned man. I know I must die. May I speak, Your Honor? Or are you afraid to? Keep talking, Mr. Lorry. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now, last night I had a moment of weakness. Yes, I wanted to live. I had very good reasons for wanting to live. Major von Keller told me beautiful things about the future of this world they're building. And I almost believed him. But this morning... I looked out through bars and I saw his beautiful new order at work. Eight men and two women were shot because they still believed in liberty. Among them was Professor Sorel. He said something to me I couldn't hear, but I think he was telling me what to do. I knew then that I had to die. And the strange thing is, it made me happy. Those ten people died because of Paul Martin. But they didn't blame Paul. They were proud of him. Paul was a soldier without glory but in a wonderful cause. I see now that sabotage is the only weapon left to a defeated people. We must stop saying that sabotage is wrong, that it doesn't pay. It does pay. It makes us suffer, starve, and die. But though it increases our misery, it will shorten our slavery. That's a hard choice, I know. But even at this moment, more German troops are coming to this town because of what Paul Martin did. And the more troops they have to leave here, the less there are on the fighting fronts. But first, first we have to fight ourselves. Yes, any occupation in any land is only possible because the people have been corrupt. And I accuse myself first. For my own comfort and security, I made no protest against the mutilation of truth in our school books. My mother got me extra food and milk. Now, in this courtroom now, are you, you merchants of this town, you've given us the black market. Business is better than ever. Money's plentiful. Money that the Germans print themselves, and with it, you are buying up the town. I don't blame you for wanting to become rich. But you should blame yourselves for making the occupation possible. Because you cannot do these things without playing straight into the hands of the Germans. That's why I know the jury must condemn me to die. Not because I killed George Lambert, which I didn't but because I've tried to tell the truth. And the truth cannot be allowed to exist under the occupation. Officially, you'll find me guilty of murder. But don't worry. Even if you were to acquit me, the enemy would take me and put me against that same stone wall. And you, too. They can find any reason to take hostages. Oh, there, uh, there is... One final charge I must answer to, and I'm very guilty. Yesterday, I was ashamed when the prosecutor accused me of loving Louise Martin. I've always loved her secretly, but now I'm not ashamed. I'm proud, <laughs> and I feel quite young. No doubt it's because I'm going to die, you know. It's a very strange thing. Last night, Major von Keller told me I wasn't a coward. I think maybe he was right, and I'm not the only one. This town is full of courage. I'm proud of it. I'm proud to be born and die here. Thank you, Your Honor. Gentlemen of the jury, you will retire and arrive at a just verdict. <laughs> 
We have already agreed upon the verdict, Your Honor. We find the accused not guilty. Oh, oh, no. No. She wept for me, Louise. She kissed me. And with my mother, we walked home together. They walked on the streets, and I walked on the stars. Well, it's morning again, and I'm ready to leave for school. This undoubtedly is the last entry I shall ever write in my diary. They're certain to come for me soon. Good morning, young men. Would you please sit down? Boys, I don't know how much time I have. But if this is to be a short lesson, I think I've found the best book. It was given to me by Professor Sorrell. Maybe it'll be burned soon. But if it remains in your memories, it can't be destroyed. It was written in a night of enthusiasm 150 years ago, and it's called A Declaration of the Rights of Man. Article 1, All Men Are Born and Remain Free. And equal in rights. Article 2. The purpose of all political parties is the safeguarding of the natural and inalienable rights of man. These rights are liberty, property security, and resistance to tyranny. Article 3. The principle of all governments resides... Hmm, yes? How about that... You're uh, under arrest. Uh, one moment, gentlemen, please. Um, the principle of all government resides in the nation itself. No group, no individual can exercise any authority that does not expressly emanate from the people. I said you will come with us. Well, <laughs> I must go now, boys. Goodbye. Albert, 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 my dear. Please, please, <laughs> thank you, my darling. Now, please, don't cry. Would you tell me, Mother, and remember that I am happy? I am completely happy. Let go, madam. Oh, no. Let him go. Albert, Albert. Goodbye, citizen. Down, boy. Article 4. Liberty consists in freedom to do all. That does not harm others. Article 5. The law has the right to forbid only those things which are harmful to society. Article 6. The law is the expression of the will of the people. All citizens have the right to assist. Our stars return for their curtain calls in just a moment. Now, here's Libby Collins with an interesting news item she found the other day. Well, it seems that some wax landing in England nearly created an international incident by wearing sheer hosiery. Of course, it was rayon, but it was so good-looking that the clothes ration British women thought the American girls were wearing silk stockings. Well, Libby, I don't blame them. I can't tell the difference. They all look pretty good to me. <laughs> yes, today's rayons are sheer-looking and flattering, as many pre-war silk stockings. And, of course, they need the same care you gave silk. Gentle luxe care after every wearing. Takes practically no time at all. And if you squeeze stockings in the same suds you've used for undies, you don't waste a bit of your precious luxe flake. Luxing saves elasticity, so stockings give under strain instead of breaking easily into runs. In fact, actual strain tests proved luxe cuts down runs and rayons. Helps you get twice the wear from every pair. Lux stockings lasted twice as long as stockings rubbed with cake soap or washed with a strong soap. And don't forget to let rayons dry thoroughly, 24 to 48 hours. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars, Mr. DeMille in Little Rock, Arkansas, and our stars on the stage of the Lux Radio Theater in Hollywood. If you've all enjoyed tonight's play as much as I have, you'll want to join me in calling Charles Lawton and Maureen O'Sullivan back to the footlights for a curtain call. Thank you, C.B. This has been rather a gala occasion for me. An anniversary of some kind, Charles? No, I've just had my hair cut. Oh. 
<laughs> you honor us. C.B., if you'd gone without a haircut for six months, you'd appreciate it. Or on second thoughts, if my memory serves me correctly, maybe you wouldn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, my hair hasn't mattered in 40 years. <laughs> I suppose your long coiffure was for a picture, Charles? Yes, for the Canterville ghost of M.G.M. Oh. Marine. I play the ghost. I slip through keyholes and all that sort of thing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you're the most substantial ghost I ever met, Charles. <laughs> By the way, C.B., this is the first play I've ever acted in where the producer was a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to take your word for it that you really are in Arkansas. I see, when do you open the story of Dr. Wassell? Wednesday, Charles. Uh, and it'll be a double premiere in two theaters. Dr. Wassell is here in Little Rock with me, and his hometown has made him a present of the city. It's a real hero's homecoming. Our very best wishes for the premiere, Mr. DeMille. Will you be back here next week? Yes, and in time for rehearsals, Maureen. Oh. Next Monday night, our play is the universal comedy success, Appointment for Love. And our stars will be Paul Lucas and Olivia de Havilland. This, this is the gay love story of a famous playwright and a woman doctor who takes the scientific approach to romance. With Paul Lucas, the Academy Award winner, as the playwright, and Olivia de Havilland as the doctor, appointment for love is an appointment for a delightful evening. That's a date, C.B. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night from all of us out here in the audience. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Olivia de Havilland and Paul Lucas in Appointment for Love. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Arkansas. Here's a patriotic way to get more red ration points. Just save used fats and turn them into your butcher regularly. He'll give you two red points for every pound. Keep a tin can near your sink for table scraps containing fat. Melt them down once a week. This fat, plus drippings and the grease from the broiler or frying pan, is just what our government needs. Turn it in just as soon as your salvage tin is full. The fat you save will help give our fighting men the material and medicines they need. Always put fats in a tin can, any size. Never a glass container. Heard in tonight's play were Regina Wallace as the mother, Dennis Green as George, Ralph Lewis as Paul, Cliff Clark as Sorrell, Douglas Wood as the mayor, and John McIntyre, Charles Seal, Norman Field, Tyler McVeigh, Howard McNear, and Billy Roy. This program is broadcast to our fighting forces overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. Our music was directed by Louis Silver. Three great shows, same time, same station. Listen tomorrow night at this time for George Burns and Gracie Allen and their guest star, Frank Morgan. Listen Wednesday night for Frank Sinatra singing Suddenly It's Spring. Adolph Manju is to be Frank's guest. This time, Lux time. Every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday for the tops in entertainment. This is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Paul Lucas and Olivia de Havilland in... Appointment for Love. Heidi Hine, no points for Spry. It's true, ladies. Now you don't have to spend even one red ration point for Spry. The new Easy Mix shortening that gives lighter, better tasting cakes that stay fresh longer. Get point free Spry tomorrow. Use it for all your baking and frying. Remember, no points for spy shortening. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.